what's going on YouTube? It's Donnie Bear all day. All right, so it's time, man. It's time. It's time. I was talking to the people over at Takumi Talk, and they're like, you still have a couple more, right? And I was like, I just did a video saying they're coming. So today, we're going to do one. I told you in the last video that I did where I explained that these were coming, I did an upcoming knives video. I talked about how I usually save my favorite designs when I get a group of knives in. I'll save my favorite ones for last because I want to savor those. And the only time that changes is if somebody has a request. Oh, can you put out this one because I'm really interested in it. So this is one of those designs that I held on to. And when I first saw it, I thought to myself, oh, it's a little weird. It's a little funky. <laughs> Takumi talked this funky right. I'm not going to lie to you. So when I saw this, this is called the Hunter, right? Check this out. So my first thought was, how is it going to feel in the hand? I want to get the numbers right, too. So it's the Hunter TKF207BK. I'm going to put down a bunch of links down below, like um, the page link, the Amazon link, just things like that. And I'll, I'll even what I'll do is I'll put down the link to the other one I still have to do. I'll put down those links, too, so you can get a head start. Um, but that one's coming soon. Uh, so I, I saw this, and then I really started evaluating the um the design and i thought it's kind of multi-purposeful it has a really nice sweep which is a hunting knife design you have a flat spine and it is 90 and it is four and three quarter millimeters thick this is a pretty thick blade d2 steel which they heat treat d2 better than just about anybody on the planet you always got to love takumi talk for that and one of the things that you have to like about Takumi Talk is they're not afraid to push the envelope. They're not afraid. They're not afraid to take grooves and push the G10 into, into ways that nobody else is doing because they know they're going to find a way to make it work just by being creative. And that's one thing that these guys are definitely creative. But I saw this and I went, how is this going to be a formidable hunting knife? Well, once you put it in your hand, and you see this extra wide choil. This choil means I can get a one and like a, a full finger in there. Plus I can lock the middle finger. Smaller hands are going to be able to, you'll be able to kind of get like almost two fingers in there. But um, I can push my finger all the way to the edge and it's not hitting the blade because it's deep enough. And then I can take my middle finger and get it right on that ridge. And the control you have with this knife using a thumb on that very flat spine Man, the intricate um, the intricate carvings you can do with this knife is really nice. Then they have the jimped um, thumb well on top. So you have an over-under. So now if I want to choke down and I can use it as a push, I have a place for my thumb right on the jimping, have a place for my palm on the, on the top. So now I can do push cutting, right? Close, close up, really, really nice comfort cutting or um, skinning with that using that big wide choil and then the fact that the handle is curved ergonomically so your fingers wrap through it but your palm this is the the area where you're getting right here that is going to sit so well in that area no matter how you grab it you're finding a way to hold that blade to where it's going to contour somewhere in your grip so that's what I really liked about it. And then I thought even further about it. I was like, it's not just a hunting knife. You ever see those war spike knives? Me and Scabber was just talking about some war spikes. And um, I have to say, it uh, bit my tongue. It has like a very war spike feel to it. So not only are you going to have a knife that you can take out to the bush and you can skin with, you'll be able to do all of your bushcraft knives. This is a straight up bushcraft knife that is a secondary self-defense knife and i get that question a lot can it be used for self-defense can this be used for self-defense this is a straight up self-defense bushcraft knife you couldn't design it any clearer you know it, it can't be you can't look at this and go well it's either a self-defense knife or it's a bush no it's both this is straight up both and that's what impressed me about it i was going to do this one when i first saw the group i was going to do this one first because Visually, it didn't capture me right away. It took me to really investigate the design to find out that 
this thing is designed pretty good, man. And, and, and that's why I'm reviewing it so late. I put up a bunch of knives in front of it because I wanted to take my time. I like to, what I'll do is I'll keep, I have both of them. I have the other one sitting right next to me and I have both of them really close to me. So every now and then when I'm sitting here, if I'm watching a, a movie or I'm doing something, I put them in my hand and I'll just move them around and I like to feel the grip and I love, I love to learn the knife. So the longer I have a knife next to me, the more I'm learning it. It's generally because I like it. I, I like the knife, so I want to play with it a little bit more. And and that's what happened with this. That's why it took so long to get this review out. It's because I want to give the knife the best review that I can. I want to give it the most honest review I can. If it's straight out of the box, if I get something in, let's say they send me a box of knives, I open the box of knives, I take them all out, and I shoot reviews... I'm shooting reviews on knives I don't know. You know what I mean? Knives that I haven't experienced. Knives that I'm not living with in my hand. And I'm not talking about using because I like to use, when I do the review, I the brand new edge. I don't cut anything with it. But I'm going to put it in my hand. I'm going to mess with it. I'm going to look at it. And I do a lot of that. I do a lot of like just studying it and just looking at some of the contours and, and some, of the, uh, some of the grip detail it's really, really nice, nicely done. But let's get into the specs and then just take it outside and cut with it. Like always with Takumi Tak, you have a really, really nice sheath. I mean, these things are fantastic. It's Kydex. You do have um, drainage holes in them. You do have a ambidextrous, multi-positional, um, gated um, pocket... Uh, clip uh, belt clip where was my head going um you have these guys right here that you can leave on take off readjust so if you have a really thin belt you can make this a really thin belt keep if you have a really wide belt you can take them off you have a whole lot of space there for a pretty wide belt it's bigger than any belt loops so you have the ability to take move change distort whatever you want to do flip it to the other side anything you want to do and how does it work it's really simple you're going to take this and you're going to close it and it's going to click. These two guys are going to click. This little gate folds up. Now it's locked in. It can't come off. Open the gate, pinch the sides, lift up. That's how these work. It's like quiet genius. These things are used all over the place on so many different knives. And the reason is because they're really good. They're multifunctional. They hold different, different areas. They work on different belts. Just an excellent, excellent clip to use. Very, very good. Um, but outside the clip, you do have extra lashing holes. So you can put a ferro rod or you can tie down some um, some cordage. I can adjust this one up so I can have it ride on the belt however I want, which is really nice. And the fact that it's a, a solid click, there's no movement in there. It's not going to fall out at all. Very, very well done on the sheath and the specs. So first of all, you have a um, titanium nitride finish. I got all the specs behind me. So if you're wondering why I'm not paying attention to you, I'm paying attention to you. Uh, it is obviously true full tang. Really, really nice. The fit and finish on these things are, is fantastic. I have never had a failed Takumi Tak knife. And everybody that has bought them has who has commented has talked about how much they love them. These are really quality knives. Um, overall length is nine and a half inches. The blade length is four and a half inches. The handle length is five inches. Very, very generous. Um, you have a nine inch package here. I mean, nine ounce package here. Uh oh, you're welcome, ladies. You have um, a straight back D2 steel with a Rockwell of 61, 62. Um, you've got four and three quarter millimeter. Um, so like 4.75 millimeter, um, blade stock. It is a flat grind as it should be <clears throat> with a plain edge. I, which I love G10. It is black, obviously with pressure retention. So that's it. We're going to take it outside and cut. We want to test the um, sharpness. Now, remember I, I talked about the fit and finish every single one of these, not just the, the blade stock, but also, the scales are all CNC machined, so every single one of them comes to a perfect cut. You're not going to find um, like some people. Some people love the uh, 
the handmade knives where they're hand forged and you're going to find you know up oh, this grind doesn't match this grind or this is a, and it they, they oh man but it was made by hand and i love that it shows the craftsmanship and then some people are all about the fit and finish they're like nope i don't want any flaws i want a perfect knife for people that want a perfect knife takumi talk really is the way to go so designed in the usa let's uh let's take it out let's take it outside it's a beautiful day! You know, over the last month, we've had nothing but like rain and cold and wind. So to have today the way it is, is really, really nice. So check this thing out in the light. Whoa. It's it's actually, the more I look at it, the more I like it type knife. Um, and once I put it in my hand, I was like, sold. It's just a good knife. It's just a good knife. What can you do? So now I told you that you can use it as a war spike for self-defense. Now it is not a fighting knife. It's not balanced that way, but it'll still get around in the hand. It's still pretty versatile. Um, it, it's just, it, it's got a cool factor that a lot of other knives don't have. Um, and I know a lot of people dig the cool factor. I know I do. I just really dig it. So let's do some um, four foot gravity drops. Oh, you know what? Let's, let's, let's test some of this some of this sharpness here. Let's clean up the alien. And I didn't say let's try. I said let's clean up the alien because I've never had a Takumi Tak knife come not shave sharp. I mean, shave sharp. I know I got a little breeze here and they're blowing away, but the good thing is you can absolutely see. And I'll show you up close. I'll show you up close. I gotta get in the sun. You can see that I'm not in the sun, but there we go. I can't see anything. There's no hair here. <laughs> There's hair, no hair. These things are razor freaking sharp. Razor sharp. Straight out of the box. All right, four foot drops. We'll see how that bite is. Boop. Did you hear the thud? It hits, it leaves a nice triangle. It leaves a nice triangle in there. Do a couple hard downwards. Boom! Do you hear that? That thing is solid. Bam! That is solid, man. You can absolutely see how far in it got. You can see all the stuff on the blade. That's nice. That's nice. All right, let's try. Let's try for a good old push cut. No saw action. Wow, that went smooth. Wow! That is super clean. That was one of the smoothest push cuts to date. That was smooth, smooth. Um, I like that. That was that was really nice. Let's give it a, a little prying. You hear? Can you hear the? Whoa! That was dead wood. Actually, let's pry off some of that dead wood. And cut off some of that dead wood. Man, I'm telling you, it, it's even. Even though the wood is dead, I get to a point where the tip is sticking in. So it's absolutely prying and it's doing a very, very good. I don't mean like it's listening to your conversation. Oh, it is, but it is prying. Very, very, very nice. So, I mean, it's just a, it's just a good knife. Just a good knife. So let's, uh, let's test it even more. We're going to do a, uh, do a chop we'll see with that nice curved handle i have some pretty good grip co uh, confidence there especially with the texturing in this you know what's funny is they have takumi talk right on the on the grip and it's etched in and i'm absolutely feeling it with my thumb so it's the the just the name the branding on there is providing grip that's pretty wild i didn't notice that earlier Ooh, i got into the oh, I, I caved in the wood with the with the uh the handle here let's see there we go we just needed a nice hard thing to hit it on beautiful beautiful let's see let's shave some leather i didn't say try i said let's shave some leather um i don't know if you guys can see that from this distance so let's let's get you into the light shine yo Ever love and light on me. All right, so here we go. Bam. 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 A 
I'm in a hole. I'm in a belt hole. Bam. It's just super, super slicey. Um, really, really nice. Really nice. They, they just come so freaking sharp. Uh, that's one thing you can take away from these things is it's always going to come out of the box with a razor's edge and they hold an edge. That's a really, really nice thing. Um, all, all of like my, um, my Takumi Tak Takumi. And I bring that one up all the time because it's my favorite. I, it's like one of those perfect knives. There's nothing on the Takumi I would change at all. I mean, it's just amazing. Um, but that knife, that knife, I've never done anything to the edge. Um, I took it out, uh, on a camp with me, used it all weekend. And, um, it was just fantastic. Just a, a really, really great knife. And, uh, the edge is still, still natural, still original and, uh, still awesome. So this thing right here, cutting through all this sappy wood and I'm talking sappy. My hands are getting so sticky right now. Um, I mean, not even at a good angle, <laughs> at a terrible angle, but the knife doesn't care. The knife says, I will make up for your mistakes. Look at that. That's, I mean, come on, man. I'm not doing it right. And the knife is doing it right for me. So that was nice. Just trying to get on video and not using a natural angle. The knife didn't care. It's just going to work anyway. It's just shredding, just shredding. Let's see here. Now it's not a chopper, but I mean, it's chopping. So this thing, let's get a good look. You see all the sap on there and now we'll go over and we'll do some fine feather sticking with a dirty sappy blade. I'm not gonna wipe any of it off. We're just gonna use it as is. Why? Because the edge is good enough to where even if it's, if it's all caca, you're still gonna be okay. You're still gonna be okay. <laughs> I mean, look at how fine those are. Look at how fine those are. Woo. Now let's try and use the, the push. And that is one really nice um, thing about having a completely flat top is you can grab your blade from anywhere and you can push and you can get some really really nice feathering without worrying about cutting your hand or dinging yourself up or anything like that and what you're going to do is you're going to create a whole little nest a nice little like you could see how tight those are you need to build a fire you need small tiny little pieces of kindling that there my friends is going to work look at this Oh my gosh, I mean, I'm gonna lose it. It's gonna blow off, but look at that curl. Look at that curl. That is so nice. It's like the end of an Italian man's mustache. It's beautiful. Woo! I'm telling you, even a, a nasty sap filled edge is gonna give you fine, delicate curls. Fine, delicate curls. Look at that. That right there is easy peasy, lemon squeezy type um, type curls right there. That makes fire happen. This thing is just so well-rounded when it comes to being a camp knife. Um, and it, it's just the more you hold it, the more it becomes part of you. It's like an extension of your arm. Very, very nice. Let's keep going though. Whoa. So, you know, we gotta try. You know, we gotta try, huh? You gotta try and figure out a spot over here. See where I need to be. Let's see here. <laughs> this is where I need to be. All right, so four yards away. Yeah. That hit like a ton. Uh, <laughs> I told you it, it's kind of reminds me of a war spike. That thing threw like a war spike. If you've ever thrown a war spike or a battle spike, you'll know that 
they're super easy to throw. I barely had to line myself up. That was just, and obviously it was a brand new knife. First time I ever threw it. <laughs> no problem. No problemo. Um, that was awesome. That was all. Oh, that one felt good. <laughs> Whew. Man, are you gonna be able to? Are you gonna be able to skin with this thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. Getting it into a nice, a nice position. This thing's all floppy. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to hold it without cutting my fingers or my knee. Oh my gosh, I'm just, just shaving really tight little pieces. So, can you? can you skin with the hunter yeah it's the hunter for a reason but now let's um let's make some kindling let's bang on it a little bit oh good i got some knots in this one so it'll be more of a challenge than not knotted let's we'll see here we go give it a nice hard shot to break it open and bam right through the knots very, very nice. Very, very nice. Golly. Golly. It's a hunter, but it's a bushcraft hunter. This thing, you hear that wood snap? Let's see, we got enough 90. There we go. There we go. Oh, this wood is going multi-directional. It's hard to get a push. Oh, that's right through a knot. That's why. I was, I was wondering why I couldn't push it. I'm like, why the hell can't I push this? Bam. Because it went right through that. No warping, no nothing. And I'll show you. I'll show you. I know you, you don't want to trust me. You don't want to trust me. I got to show you. There we go. Bam. So, let's get a good... A good look at that oh you see that beautiful shine on the edge man these things are always heat treated to perfection just always heat treated to perfection let's see here let's see here for for those of you who were doing the tri-stick challenge i'll tell you what this would be a good knife for it this would be a good knife for the tri stick, man, man, long sweeping cuts gonna make that point really nice. So if you gotta make your pit spikes and tent spikes and hot dog sticks and all that jazz, you want a knife that can make a sharp point. Maybe you need to make a spear, something like that. I'll tell you. You need a knife with an edge. That there's a knife with an edge. It's actually a really good knife. It's a really good knife. I, I, it's so funny how when I first saw it, I didn't know. I didn't know if it was going to be something that I was going to really like. This thing is uh, it's pretty dope, man. That's pretty dope. That's a cool knife. So, let's see. Sappy, banged on, worked in. Is it still sharp? <laughs> well, that answers that question. Shaving eyes, <laughs> bald spot right there. The 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 blade, it, <laughs> nice round spot. Um, the blade is so sappy. Like on your fingertips, you run your fingertips across, and all you feel is sticky lumpiness. But it's still shaving. It's still shaving with all that crap on the edge that you can literally feel with your fingers and your thumbs. I can feel it on there and it's still shaving. That says something. That's that's pretty special right there. So I'll tell you what, man. Follow the links below. Check one out for yourself. This is the Takumi Tak Hunter. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Hi, I am Donnie B. All Day. Until next knife.